Now, kicking us off with episode two in this series is Steve Cropper, who was the guitarist for Booker T and the MGs, also known as the Stax Records house band. And these guys were legendary with the Memphis soul sound from the early 60s on. Now, Steve Cropper had the knack for writing some iconic guitar parts, and he helped Otis Redding co-write Sitting on the Dock of the Bay. He was with Wilson Pickett on In the Midnight Hour, and also Sam and Dave on the song Soul Man. <laughs> amongst many other iconic songs that he helped collaborate on. The guy was just phenomenal and knew what the song needed and played it perfectly. Steve's resume and discography are long and extensive, and he played with such artists as the country group Alabama, all the way through Rod Stewart, and has won multiple Grammys and nominated for countless other Grammy Awards on songs that he helped collaborate with or co-write. Now, after the golden age of Stax Records, Steve continued to make his mark in the music industry. And if you guys remember the film, The Blues Brothers, led by comedians Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi, Steve was the guitarist in the Blues Brothers band, which that's so cool. Our next session player was Cornell Dupree. And this guy was a great jazz and R&B guitar player. And he started his career off early on with the Atlantic Records house band, laying down tracks with such artists as Aretha Franklin, Bill Withers, Lou Rawls, Joe Cocker, and even Miles Davis. At the age of 17, George Barnes was hired by the NBC Orchestra and quickly realized that he wanted to play the electric guitar. So George is considered one of the first pioneers to use an electric guitar with a jazz-based orchestra. Now, during his career, George Barnes recorded with the likes of Mel Torme, Ella Fitzgerald, Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, Johnny Mathis, and others. And he was inspiration to and influenced guys like Chad Atkins and Herb Ellis. In 1930s, George Barnes became one of the first musicians to utilize the electric guitar, which was a rarity at that time. And by the age of 16, he made his first recording using an electric guitar. That innovative move positioned him as one of the early innovators of electric guitar, where he was blending traditional jazz techniques with this new amplified guitar sound. His collaborations included work with artists such as Benny Goodman, Frank Sinatra, Louis Armstrong, and Ella Fitzgerald, and a whole host of other artists that he worked with. Coming out of New York City, we have Dave Spinoza. Dave Spinoza's career is marked by numerous iconic collaborations. Throughout the 70s and 80s, he played on albums by artists such as John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Paul Simon, James Taylor, and Aretha Franklin. One of his early notable gigs was playing on Paul's debut solo album, McCartney, in 1970. His guitar work on tracks like Another Day showcased his ability to seamlessly blend into any musical context. This exposure opened doors to further collaborations with high-profile musicians and cemented his reputation as a top-tier session player. Spinoza's ability to adapt to various musical styles quickly made him a favorite among producers and artists. Dave's ability to provide innovative and tasteful guitar parts made him a very sought-after session player. His versatility allowed him to adapt to a wide variety of musical situations such as rock, pop, jazz, and R&B. Now, in addition to Dave's prolific session work, he's also had a solo career blending styles of jazz, funk, rock, and R&B styles all into his own unique signature sound. And if that wasn't enough, he's also been a producer on many other artists' albums. His producing credits include work with Yoko Ono, Dr. John, and Don McLean.
Now, I think most people recognize that theme from James Bond. And that was the piece of music that in 1962 really put Vic Flick's name on the guitar session player map. Not before the James Bond theme in 1962, during the 1950s, Vic was a very prominent session player doing sessions for rock, pop, jazz, and other styles of music in England that was paving the way for his success in the future. And I tell you, his iconic guitar tones that he achieved through his gear are classic, just timeless sounds that fit those styles of music. Vic knew exactly what the movie needed, the sound it needed to get that feel or vibe from it. Vic also contributed to some of the Beatles material as well as Tom Jones. Hey, drop those comments down below and let me know what you thought of this video. And if you've got any recommendations for other session players I haven't listed yet. Now, I do have a list of other players that I'm going to be incorporating into future episodes, but still, I'd love to hear your recommendations. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider hitting that subscribe button for me. And until next time, keep rocking on.